yeah so you can see the sort of format of this unit you have i have uh, a thing on the right top side and a thing on the right bottom side and the thing on the right top side is sort of what the current situation looks like and the thing on the right bottom side is what the errors are and all the debugging stuff right so what lean is in lean a lean is a way to prove mathematical statements oh, okay. so i write down a proof i write down a proof of a mathematical statement and the computer can verify it for me and like it will check all the technical details so for example so here is what a basic i look at it i uh, so you have this rotated t symbol right i think so am i recording at least one yeah yeah sorry yeah. so in lean you have uh, some given information and the thing you want to prove so, so any uh, everything after this rotated this rotated t sign is the thing you want to prove and everything before that is the given information okay so what we are what we are given is x y z are minus which is to say x y z are natural numbers and we have to prove this statement this x x star y plus z equal to x star y plus z like did that make sense yeah okay we want to prove this statement right all right so this the statement we want to prove is x star y plus z equal to x star y plus z and you see those two are exactly the same thing so the way to prove it in lean is to write a refer which is reflexivity and it will it will complete your proof if the thing you have to prove is of the form a equal to right uh, see there is a proof complete here it so what was the function of the refl command so refl proves anything uh, if you have a if you have if you are given statement to prove is of the form a equal to a then refl will prove that ah oh, okay i see like RFL, rfl basically tells the computer that you dumb computer these are exactly the same things do it and so they'll just verify both the sides yeah all right actually something something a bit more than that but yeah for now that's fine and every line in lean ends with a comma so i guess that was fine uh all right the next one so we have uh, in given information x y are binary and we have an extra hypothesis which says that y equal to x plus 7 and we want to prove that 2 star y equal to 2 star x plus 7 and just refl won't work right because there is some sort of cleverness involved the cleverness being the fact that i have to use the hypothesis h so so i will write rwh and what this does is so hypothesis h says that y equal to x plus 7 so what rw will do it will look for y that is the left hand side of the hypothesis in the thing we want to prove and replace that by the right hand side right so now can you tell me how to finish okay i see so then you just apply the refl comma yeah exactly yeah uh huh okay or otherwise i can just put a a here and rw a will do rw and refl all right so rw a is like, like you substitute and then compare yeah you you, you just you substitute so rw does rw plus rfl i yeah, i see exactly so these are sort of like the function means more or less and so uh give me a proof like tell me the lines oh all right so suck a is equal to b you want to prove that suck wait you want to prove that successor of successor of a is b right a Su successor of b right yeah so you first do r w uh, suck a 
part of the H, the name of the hypothesis. Oh, okay, right. Sorry, sorry, sorry. H, yeah, yeah. H. And then you do REFL but, comma. Is that so? Right. So one yeah. minor thing. Uh, yeah, that's correct. So you see it replaces sake by B, but there can be times when you want to replace the right hand side by the left hand side instead of the left hand side by the right hand side. And the way to do that is slash L. RW slash L each. So you see now it's suck off, suck off, it will suck off, uh, suck off. Hey. Oh, okay. And then finish by the first. Uh, all right. Uh, what more? So here we actually have a few more hypotheses. So we have these two as well, add zero and add successor. And we have the two, and we can use these two. So again, uh, tell me a bit. Wait, can I repeat what you just said? So here we have A is, a is a natural number and we want to prove Oh, you want to okay, okay. All right, I see. I have these two additional hypotheses. So, what are the add zero? What are those? Those are like two extra hypotheses. So, yeah, so the reason they are written on the left hand side and not the right hand side is because they are like the formal way Lean has that. Hypothesis that a plus zero equal to a. right. Initially, we were given random names a, h, f, g, etc., etc. And yeah, those are the hypotheses. So the first one says that a is given a is minus, then a plus zero equal to a. Right, right. Okay, I see. So we are going to use the second hypothesis first, followed by the first hypothesis, right, and then. So you want me to do a RW at set? Yep, and then RW at zero. I'm waiting for the proof. All right, so anyway, this was the first level, uh, like the first. The thing I did in the first uh, tutorial was mainly just explaining what lean looks like and explaining what these basic syntaxes are. So I guess I'll do induction and then move on to the main part of the tutorial. All right. So you see, uh, there is no way without induction. We have to use induction somehow. We cannot use commutativity because we have not proved commutativity yet. So this uh, long tactic is we are just doing it. We induct on it. And we name the variable, and as it is the name of the induction hypothesis. So we wanted to prove zero plus n equal to n, and how we would usually do is you do it for the base case, which is n equal to zero, and then assuming that I can do it for d, I have to do it for successor of d. So on the right hand side, if you see, I have two goals: the first one being the base case, and the second one being the induction step. So the first one I can finish by add zero. Should we add three? Right. Now I have to. Okay. Uh, tell me to move the second part. So for for people who are joining, we will start multiplication world after this level. I went a bit too fast.
So, the first yeah, now thing you just like use the Yes, sorry, continue. Sir. And then, uh, all right, that so, uh, that was a quick overview. And okay, so we'll start multiplication world then. At any point, if you want to ask me what REPL means or what RW means, or how a particular, uh, I guess, tactic works, feel free to do that. I don't expect you to learn all the syntax. Right, so I, you can take a few minutes and read the prompt and then uh, feel free to. Tell me this, what the first line of the should be. So, quite a few people jump. So, uh, other than people who have already answered, uh, Saswat, uh, Ishika, Samil, uh, did you guys do any lean after uh, the tutorial? I'm just asking so that this stuff does not look too, too trivial. Uh, I didn't uh, do uh, after the first tutorial. Nice. Yeah, neither did I. Yes, so, neither did I. I'll send the link for the. I'll just send the link for the natural number. Uh, can you repeat? No, I'll just. Sending the link for the natural number game, you can get to the multiplication world by that. I was answering okay. Vijay. Uh, yes, yes, thanks. Feel free to uh, tell me what the first line should be. So we have these two as well, right? Mul zero and mul successor. Anyone? Uh, the first line. First line is induction. Induction aim with DHD. Right now. Group Just a second. Uh, you can hear me clearly. Right? I have to move. So I am loud enough, right? Hello. Hello. I guess yes. yes. So uh, w mul zero, uh, mm -hmm. then I guess uh, w, w mul success. successor, uh, w h d, right? So Interesting thing, you see REPL closes 0 plus 0 equal to 0, okay? It's, yeah. not, it's, it's not, the thing I said about REPL is not, 
it's it's not supposed to that but what level does it it uh, closes uh, any two so hum there is some echo from you right so ideally like the proper way to do it would be to add in a rw add zero here and then refer closes this right so uh did that proof make sense or should i explain anything because quite a few of you are looking at me enough to quite some time so should i move on or is there anything you want to explain you can type a yes or no in chat if you or uh so if you understood this uh, and what we do move on type a yes in the chat or I'll move on if I have two yeses, three yeses. Am yeah, I more difficult? Yes, yes. All right, I'll just wait for one more person to say. They understand this, and then I move on. Okay. So, yeah. Same thing. Uh, feel free to feel free to give give me a proof. You can either talk or just type the proof in the chat. The induction with uh, induction name will be. Do you have a headphone or something? Maybe put that on. I don't know. Maybe the headphone issue. Why they could be? Actually, what is induction? We actually need induction. Let's see. Then we have to. Uh, we have to somehow use the fact that one is the successor of zero. And Oh, actually, I can just use zero module. Okay. Uh, give me the next line. Give me the next thing. So, will this actually work, or maybe it will? Let's see.
already. Uh, did that make sense? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'll wait for 20 more seconds and move on. I don't know. Oh, that's the same. Yeah, I did the same thing. Right. So I was actually wondering if we can do this without induction. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this works right. I don't need induction. Should I explain this too far? Is this too far? It's hard for me to tell if everything looks trivial or everything looks uh, or I'm going to question. So any response will help. So I'll just explain it anyway. So I want to go that n star one is equal to m. And so I somehow will have to use the fact that one is actually equal to the successor of zero. Right? So I do that. And then I have m star successor of zero is m. So the idea is that you constantly look at what all given information you have. The things on the left and this thing. And Try to construct a proof from those. Right, so uh, should I go on? Should I go to the next level? Right, I'll assume no answer means that all this stuff is. Easy and sure. So, don't use the piece. All right. Uh, uh, someone give me the first link. The first line. Again, I think I think there might be a way of uh, maybe not. All right, one star zero is equal to zero. I can use null zero for that. Ruffle. And then I have, I will have to use by null successor. Hmm. 
So give me the best of the two. Uh, again, I'll wait 20 seconds and then go to the next level. Ah, uh, distributivity. Left distributivity. I think that all the levels of, almost all the levels of validation will start with induction. Not end. So, what should I end up on? T. Uh, T. Okay, let's try T. And it's in general a good exercise to uh, try to end up on multiple things and see which one works. So Soham has given a proof. I'll just do. Then I guess a W successor multiplication. What do I do? Let's try this. Does this one? Yeah. I don't think that helps. Yes. So, how do you have rest of the two? Or... Yeah, I I don't think uh, T in induction T will work. A or B. Let's try B. Induction. Okay. 
Ideally, Hello. now. I guess this. Then this. Uh, okay, this looks hard. This. Someone is in the waiting room. Sorry for the bad one, guys. All right, I'll do this. Uh, RW add receptive on what I need to do this on. Right. I think this by itself will work. Yeah. Then maybe RW add com. No, not that. I don't know what come, but on T star BMT, I don't know what come on T star B on T. All right, nice. Yeah, that was a bit non daily, but I think. If you uh, inducted on B instead of A, you wouldn't have to use the yeah. associativity yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. I think that was my old profile. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Induction on B. Right. So, anyway, so even so you actually got to know that some uh, so just add community would not work because. Uh, w just looks for the first time that pattern occurs, right? So, can someone explain to me why this does not work? I mean, what goes wrong?
uh, anyone? If I get offer, so what is wrong if I just I don't specify the thing I want to use add comma? So all right, so what this does is what RW RW looks for the pattern on the left side of the hypothesis, right? So it looks for a pattern of the form. And the first time it sees the pattern is this is the A, uh, this thing is the A, and this thing is the B. So if I just do a W at comb, then it actually writes it that as T star B plus T plus T star D. But I want to increase in D. That's right. If you see this proof, uh, so uh, That does not work in so how the thing you said it shows an error at least on my side. Or add right competitive. Yeah. I guess you can do that as well. But the thing Soham sent does not work for the same reason. You have to use much more into the what exactly are you committed for community one? All right, but I guess the proof makes sense. I'll move on. Uh, yeah. I'll just start this one. So I guess RW my zero. So repeat you repeat just keeps on applying until you get the thing. Yeah. So uh, what should I do? I guess RW my successor. And then somehow I have to get that So at any point feel free to type your own proof in this or say it. So try inducting on A and B and see if you can make it work. But yeah, so anything you want to explain in this? Uh, you can just say no if you understood everything.
am i even audible <laughs> yes sir are right. okay maybe you went to question this level but so So if you are interested, just type something in the chat or say something. I'm very really confused if this is trivial or this actually is not trivial for you guys. I'll have at least one yes. Okay, I'll move on. And this is a bit chewy. Yeah. So I guess you already saw the first thing. Induction B. Let's just B. Uh, in center, I want to say B. B with B on B. Mm. Success at times zero. So on the blue, uh, null zero. Again, on the blue, null zero. Then Definitely directly works. So I'll have to use A B somehow. So I'll have to break down successor of B. So do I have mul suck? I have mul suck. Terrible keyboard. Yes, I wait and see. Yes, it's right. And let's uh, use it again. Hmm. Yeah, I can brute force out, but I don't think this is the shortest way to do this. Uh, I'll have to do B plus successor of A is equal to A plus successor of B, right? B, and the blue add associated. So, wait. No, never mind. I'll do it once. Right. I'll do RW add stuff, or maybe RW slash and no, okay, this also works. And I'll have to somehow get successor of B plus on that side. So now that I do oh. I need one. Associator, it will give me a plus successor of P, then RW add back, do that, no, and that. I want to apply on A and B. Right, and RW add commutative. Should I do B? And it works. Uh, I'll wait 20 seconds for questions that then move on.
I hope I'm not going to bust. All right, I'll, uh, should I go on? All right. Uh, I think the final boss is Mal, Mal committed to it, right? The final boss of this world. Probably. I'll do what do I do? What do I do? Induction. Zero plus B star. RW zero add. And RW zero null. Uh, should be Ruffel work? I think Ruffel, no, Ruffel does not work. Yeah. Right. Uh, give me the next proof. Uh, the proof next one. Oh, just one line. The first line. So I guess somehow I need to get successor of A plus B on the left hand side and the blue stop hand. Right. And I will do another and the blue stop mall. RWHA and then some rearranging. Actually, I think. Nah. Ring was the thing for closing. What do I need? I think the ring needs to close the closing. Uh, So, uh, I'll do force. Should I do force? I'll do force. Any doubts? All right, not really. So, induction A also works. Ah, so at this point, please, I'm just brute forcing, not trying to. 
I think sync was the command to set Clipper, yeah. So when you have uh, like some moving around and permuting things to do to show that that is add associativity, then add permutivity and so on, then you can complete by just simp. I think simp completes the whole thing as well. Let me try. But yeah, it's a ah, okay. Thing does thing does not complete the whole thing. Right. Nice. Now this yeah. Alright. Uh should I go to the next? I guess I'll go to function one because we have already seen the kind of thing. Uh, okay. Ah, so I maybe I so the way to think of this is PQ and uh, PQ are of type type. And for now, you can think of it as saying that P and Q are sets. And small p is the element of capital P. We have a function from P to Q called H. And we have to show that element of Q is it. Right? So, of course, the element of Q is P of Q, H small p. But the way it tells you, that the uh, is thing you have to do. The way to write this is using exact. Right? This is a new tactic. So, is the user here or is that? Anyone? Right, so as you the user is clear the one. Alright, so can someone tell me what we have to prove? I mean it says my net. I don't my net, but what the, what does that mean? Anyone? So, um, a function that goes from uh, uh, my nat num uh, natural numbers to natural numbers. Yeah, exactly. So, so the thing is, uh, if I want to specify a function, I would have to make first take an element from my nat and then show where the element goes to. So the way to do this is intro n. This says that n is a Generic element of my net, and now I have to put, uh, I have to tell me what type of n is. So anything works. Uh, uh, I guess uh, in star n or even one, send everything to one. Yeah, anything works. Right. So this was. A bit silly, but okay. So whenever we have the thing we want to prove is of the form x in x arrow y, you, we usually have to start with the intro. Right. This. One. So I think. There was a way to overkill this. Uh, was it category? Yeah, this is the picture trick. Uh, we have a bunch of functions and we want to go to u. So, one way is this. u to q to t to u. 
uh, 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 thing, right? We have done a lot of things, but I have not told you how to sort of add your own hypothesis to the given statement, right? So in some sense, so we can have that. Uh, I have the element of P, and I want the element of Q, so I can just set Q to be element of Q and define it to be uh, F of P. Right. So mm -hmm. I have to make an element of T which looks like what's the function? Let me close the function. What's the function K to be J J of Q. And then P to U in the function you get. Okay. Exactly. Right. Uh, did that make sense? Since this is a new trick. Uh, this is not related to uh, the uh, the answer that you have given, but uh, when writing the actual code, uh, we have to. Okay, no, uh, never mind. I think my doubt got answered. All right. So here's here's the same. I think maybe it's, uh, I know that there is something which works, but is it same? No, it's not simp. So simp, I think, only does algebraic looking things. There's a ring, and there was something which can solve this uh, arrow figures, whatever you want to call it. But I don't I think category, but I don't think category. Yeah, it's not category. There are some things which can solve, but yeah, I don't know. So another way to solve this question. So the idea is that if I so the same idea I uh, talked about last Curry Howard isomorphism thing. So instead of looking at P Q R as sets, you can look at them as propositions. So statements which have a proof or don't have a proof. And then you can look at small p as a proof of capital P and H instead of a function p to q you can look at it as h saying that p implies q right so h uh, i have a proof of p h says that p implies q i says that q implies r and so on i want to get a proof of u right so there is a backward way or at least backward with respect to what we did apply l so it changed the goal from u to t, right? Because l is a function from u to t. Uh, sorry, l is a function from t to u. And if you want to show that u uh, u is u has a proof, it suffices to show that t has a proof. And then I can apply g and finally apply uh, h. I think the code is apply P. Yeah. I'm actually doing this. So uh, you will actually do all this stuff. The function world and proposition world, in fact, have the same sort of, in fact, the same things to prove, but function world has them as sets and functions, whereas proposition world has them as proposition and their groups. Right. 
should I go on? Someone say yes now. Yeah, that also works, but exact L of J of H of P looks up bad. Oh, I actually have it here as well. Uh, apply tactic. So I won't do it like this since you already did it. We'll go on to the next level. Ah, this is nice. So this actually gives you a nice idea of how functions work on sets and proofs work on proportions. So uh, we want a function which takes an input from P and gives output a function from Q to P. Right. So let's take a generic element in P. And then I want to produce a function that takes elements from Q to P. Anyone? From yeah, intro Q and then yeah, exact P box. I think uh, there was a way to do this as well. There was a way to do this with lambda. Lambda s. Lambda p. Does this work? Ah, no. No, no. So, for that lambda, I'll do this the uh, propositional way. So, as functions, we are done, but as proportions, for this is that P implies Q implies P. Uh, does that make sense logically? P implies Q implies P. Uh, anyone? I'll then move on. Someone give me the first line, maybe the whole thing.
इंट्रो पी इज टू पी सो पी इज अ काइंड ऑफ बैड नेम राइट मे बी पी क्यू आर so pqr is a function that takes inputs in p and outputs functions q to r and then i have text intro pq and intro p right so i can take pqr of i can to produce a result of r right? so pqr of p would give me no no you can do this and two one right now can someone tell me the last line of the proof Or the rest of the proof, if it, even if it's not a single line. so here's the one line version so we have a bunch of functions and a bunch of sets and a bunch of elements and we want to show that we want to find the element of the set r so one way to do it will be to be exact q r of p q of p right p q takes p to q An element of Q, and Q R then takes that element of Q to element of R. And so that was the functional way of looking at things. Logically, this statement is a bit convoluted. So good luck on understanding that. And basically, well, I mean, I can say it in words, but it's safe logically, but it won't make much sense. Anyway, so what this says is that if if p implies q implies r, then p implies q will imply p implies r. If that made any sense, okay. So logically, this statement just say uh, uh, do I need to elaborate? So here's the mathematical sort of logical proof. I have that p implies q implies r, and I want to show that p implies q implies p implies r. But I I have the given information that p implies q, and p implies q implies r. So since p is true, q is true, and q implies r is true. Since q q and q implies r both are true, r is true. So I I started with p is true and I got to r is true. Therefore, p implies r. Good luck on making sense out of that. From what I said, but yeah. Uh, should I move on? Anything you want to take away? so um anything you want to test in or ankit uh, uh sashwat uh 
while we are doing intro uh, can we specify the type of the thing that we are in intro uh, we are uh, introducing so when when you do intro uh, you can do intro when the proof statement is of the time x implies y right and when you do intro p lean will automatically uh, so p will be of type x you cannot change that if you have a proof of the form x implies y the proof statement then anything you use anything you introduce will be of type x i guess you can like for completeness sake do this but lean will automatically give it the proper type yeah you can do it for completeness sake or you want okay to okay very Uh, should I go on? Or let him move on. Ah, uh, this is this. So, intro Q, intro Q. So, here's the weird part about this one. We have a function from P to Q and a function from Q to F, but okay, actually we can introduce P as well. Yeah, and then do uh, exact let's see Q to F Q F of Q of P. Right, but here's how function comparison works in Lean. So essentially, the answer is the comparison of P Q and Q of P. So Exact if you suck yeah something happened. What happened? All right, I think I messed up the order. So, intro PQ, intro QF, and QF of P. Yeah. Exact QF composed with PQ. Okay. Uh, so I'll just maybe finish function work and then we'll do the same thing. So yeah, I'll, I should actually give you some time to read this because. So this lean problem basically is sort of your type that false implies anything. If you can prove false, then you can prove anything. 